This is Kurt Heisinger, accounting professor at Sierra College and author of Managerial Accounting. This video describes how to perform what's called common size financial statement analysis. And what we're trying to do here is to convert each line of financial statement data, for example, the net sale, or rather the cost of goods sold line on the income statement or the accounts receivable line on the balance sheet, any line in the financial statement data, um, we're going to convert that line uh, to a percent. And we'll talk about how to do that in just a minute. Uh, it, this is also called vertical analysis. And really what that means is vertically, here's, here's your vertical line. We have these different accounts, right, vertically. And we're going to take these different accounts and figure out a percentage. Uh, so, for example, on the income statement, we'll look at cost of goods sold as a percentage of net sales. So that's why it's called vertical analysis. We're going to take each line item, but then take it as a percent of something vertically. Uh, more on that in just a minute. The in income statement items are stated as a percent of net sales. So net sales is the key there. In other words, we'll take cost of goods sold as a percent of net sales. We'll take a look at uh, operating expenses as a percent of net sales, net income as a percent of net sales. So for the income statement, items are stated as a percent of net sales. And then on the balance sheet, items are stated as a percent of total assets or as a percent of total liabilities and stockholders' equity. They're the same. Uh, total assets equals total liabilities plus shareholders equity, so it's the same. But we're going to look at line items in the balance sheet as a percent of total assets. So for example, we'll take a look at cash and what is cash as a percent of total assets. So we will take a look at those calculations in just a minute. Common size analysis does help us to analyze uh, the financial health of an organization and, and across organizations actually. It allows for the evaluation of information from one period to the next uh, within a company and between competitors. And we'll take a look at that. I actually have a slide that shows just one company and how to use this for one company. And then I have another slide that shows how to compare two companies. This analysis answers questions such as how do our current assets as a percent of total assets compare to last year? So did it go up? Did it go down? How does our net income, that's on the balance sheet, now we're looking at the income statement, how does our net income as a percent of net sales compare to that of our competitors? So not just from one year to the next, but how does it compare to um, our competitors? Here's an example of common size income statement analysis for Coca-Cola. I have a separate video that shows trend analysis for Coca-Cola. So these are the same years, same information, but now we're looking at common size. Uh, analysis. So this is the income statement for Coca-Cola two years. We're looking at for 2014 and for 2013. And you'll see that we have the dollar amount for each year and that's what's typically shown in the income statement. But then we also have the common size analysis columns which is showing the percent of each line item uh, these are line items, so cost of goods sold will be a line item, gross margin, selling and administrative, right? These are all line items. It shows <clears throat> the line item as a percentage of net sales. So, for example, I'll just walk you through one of these, and then you can do it on your own for the rest. Um, for cost of goods sold for 2014, we're looking at, uh, these are in millions, a dollar amount of $17,889,000,000. And we want to know what is that as a percent of net sales. So we just simply take the 17889, and I'm going to do this up above so you just see how this is done. 17889, and we divide that by our sales, net sales of 45998. And that gives us a point three eight nine. And I want to convert that to a percentage, so I'm going to multiply it by hundred. Let me move this over just a bit so you can so I have more space for this. So I'm going to multiply that by a hundred and that's going to give us then the percentage which is 38.9 percent. So that's how we figure out the percentage when we're performing common size analysis and that's this number right here. All right so that's how we figure it out and we do that for each line item. And then once we have that information we can take a look at what the percentage was in the previous year. So, for example, we can see here that cost of goods sold for 2014 was 38.9% of net sales, but then if you take a look at the previous year, it was 39.3% of net sales. So, cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales 
has gone down, which most companies would view as a good thing. Even though their net sales have gone down, that was we looked at that in the trend analysis video, their cost of goods sold as a percent of net sales went down, which is uh, good news for them. So we can look at this from one year to the next to get a sense of how they're doing, how these different line items appear as a percent of net sales. That was the income statement for Coca-Cola. Now let's take a look at the balance sheet. So this here is the common size analysis for the balance sheet for Coca-Cola. And again, we're looking at two years worth of information. We're looking at 2014 right here and 2013 in the right two columns. We see the dollar amounts here. That's what we would typically see in the financial statements, so nothing unusual there. And we also see the percent. And that percent, these two columns, gives us the percentage of a, it's the line item, as a percent of total assets. So let's go through one example here. Let's take a look at the cash and cash equivalence line. We could do this for any line, but I'll just start with cash and cash equivalence so you see how this calculation is done. What we're going to do is take the, these are in millions, 18 billion, 10 million dollars, and we will divide that by total assets. So each of these percentages that you see here is a percentage of that line item as a percentage of total assets. So we're going to take the 1810, I'll leave the millions off as I describe this, and we're going to divide it by the 92023. So let's take a look at this in a separate place here. Let me shrink this down a little bit so I have some room. My goal here is to, to show you how to find the 19.6% for cash and cash equivalents. And we do that by taking the cash and cash equivalents line item of 1810 and dividing it by total assets, in this case of 92023. And that's going to give us 0.196. And again, to convert to a percentage, just multiply by 100. And 0.196 becomes 19.6. Six percent. So that is what our cash and cash equivalents are as a percentage of total assets. It's that percentage right there. We can then compare this to the previous year. So it's 19 point cash and cash equivalents are 19.6% of total assets in 2014. If you look at 2013, it was 19%. So it's gone up a little bit, uh, cash and cash equivalents have, as a percent of total assets. And we can do this for each line item all the way down. So you can look at accounts receivable, for example, and see that in 2013, accounts receivable represented 5.4% of total assets. But in 2014, accounts receivable represents 4.9%. So accounts receivable as a percent of total assets actually has gone down. And this then allows us to, to, to perform this type of an analysis uh, over the course of each line item to see what's happening with each line item. Another way to use common size analysis is to take a look at one company versus another company. So here we're looking at Coca-Cola and PepsiCo. Right, you see that right here. We're looking at their income statements. So we're looking at the dollar amounts. That's what we see right here, the dollar amounts for Coca-Cola and their income statement and PepsiCo and their income statement. And then we're looking at the common size percentages for Coca-Cola and for PepsiCo. So it's not enough just to look at dollar amounts. I mean, it's nice to, to get a sense of which company has higher sales and which company has higher profit, but it doesn't tell us much about their uh, gross margin as a percent of sales, for example, or their net income as a percent of sales. So we can run that comparison using this common size format. And you'll see that in the far right. So we'll just let me just pick out a couple of numbers here that, that most analysts would take a look at right out of the chute. The gross margin for Coca-Cola is 61.1%. That's their gross margin divided by net sales. So gross margin percentage for Coca-Cola is 61%, but for PepsiCo, it's 53.7%. So Coca-Cola clearly has a higher gross margin percentage than PepsiCo. Another item that, that many will look at first 
is their operating income as a percentage of net sales. That is the income they get from their daily operations, from the core part of the business. What is that as a percentage of net sales? And so for Coca-Cola, you'll see they had 21.1%, and for PepsiCo, they had 14.4% of net sales. Their operating income was that percentage of net sales. So you can see there as well that Coca-Cola has a higher operating income percentage. So this is just another way to use common size analysis, uh, not just to look at one company, but to compare companies. This bar graph is just another way to present the same information that I just highlighted on the previous slide. So it's just a nice way to visually show what's happening with uh, Coca-Cola and, and then compare that to PepsiCo. So on the left we see Coca-Cola here and remember we saw on the previous slide that their operating income was 21.1% uh, of net sales and then over here on the right is PepsiCo and you can see that their uh, operating income as a percentage of net sales was 14.4%. And then we also see here the gross margin percentages, and it just provides a visual way to take a look at what these percentages look like uh, from Coke, one company to the next for Coca-Cola and PepsiCo.